Tottenham against Brighton. Huge game coming up in the top four. Uh, scrap at the top of the Premier League. Spurs are four points ahead of Brighton, but the Seagulls do have two games in hand heading into this game in North London. I'm going to ask you, Andy, is it almost better for Tottenham uh, to not finish in the top four this season? Uh, because I feel like maybe with the rebuild they actually need after Antonio Conte left, a lot of players uh, maybe staying at Spurs longer than they should have, this maybe would kickstart what what needs to be done, which is a massive rebuild of Tottenham. So obviously every Tottenham fan, everyone connected with Tottenham would love for them to somehow finish in the Champions League spots. But it feels like, at least I'm saying this, for their future, it's better if they don't this season. Do you agree with that as our Tottenham expert and fan? If you believe it matters one way or the other, then sure. But I don't. Because at this point, Spurs have been through enough projects, restarts, rebuilds, resets, whatever you want to call it. They have done this song and dance a number of times. They've done it a number of times since Maurizio Pochettino left not even three years ago, uh, or just over three years ago. Like The cycle that continues to go on at Tottenham was happening before Pochettino was in the job, while Pochettino was in the job, and since Pochettino was in the job. And I keep bringing him up because obviously he was the most successful manager they've had since going back to the 50s and 60s and 70s when they were you know, truly a big club in England. And so it everything points back to Daniel Levy, what Daniel Levy wants to do, how he sees this project going forward. You know, They have spent a ton of money in the transfer market in recent seasons when they were in the Champions League, when they weren't in the Champions League. And for the most part, all those signings have completely flopped and fallen flat, and they take losses when they move the players on just to get them off of the books, and then they go and do it again. Like When Pochettino left, the reason that everything fell apart that season was because they needed to replace Jan Vertonghen, Toby Aldevereld, Danny Rose, Moussa Dembele still, who had been gone a year already. And fast forward to now, they still need to replace Jan Vertonghen, Toby Aldevereld, Danny Rose, and Moussa Dembele. Like, the problems that existed back then still exist now. So I don't think it matters at this point because they continue to just do the same thing over and over again. And so you can bring in an, uh, a new old manager, a new new manager, and I don't know that it changes anything oh. until the until the plan and the, the pathway forward changes. I think it's just going to continue to be the same thing. Like when you hit that glass ceiling to, to almost joining the elites of the world, unless you have elite money, which they do not, unless you have elite history, which they do not, unless you have an elite manager and squad, which they certainly do not, it's hard to attract the elite players that can actually improve your team. And that's where they find themselves at. They are too good for the players that uh, that, that would come to Tottenham, and they are not good enough for the players that they need to take them to that next level where they believe they want to be, uh, or they believe they should be, and they want to be. That's what I'm trying to say here. I feel like if they qualify for the Champions League this season, then it papers over all the cracks and all the problems, and it will pretty much be the status quo. Are they better just moving on, even if Harry oh. Kane or Hummin saw were meant to move, and then it's like, you know they go for a younger recruitment model and dare I say, follow what a team like Brighton has been doing consistently with recruiting players from, you know, that you wouldn't really have heard about from other places in Europe and South America and rebuilding that way, Nick, because we know that they do have money, new stadiums brought in a lot of money, but wages wise, they still cannot compete with the big boys in the Premier League and Europe to, to, like you said, Andy, get to that final stage consistently but nick you don't agree with that you think no not at all i i wasn't sure when you first asked the question to andy how i felt honestly it's like oh good question and as you talk through it i don't tottenham are a massive club with a massive stadium that is going to help fund them and keep them in the the sort of upper reaches of the premier league for a long time but we've seen too often they have to make the champions league whenever they can because they need to attract people to come in. And the reputation of the club in the transfer market isn't good right now. So imagine trying to replace Harry Kane with a, I swear to God, it's going to be okay, come be our center forward. I think they need, I don't think they're at a status right now where it's instant bounce back. I think if the, if Kane goes and Son goes, which which could work, and I love Kulisevsky. I love a lot of the signings they've made. And Kulisevsky still very, very young, in my opinion, for, for that profile. I could see it literally be a position where they're sitting around seventh or eighth or in that mess for multiple seasons. 
they're in that Champions League tier right now. Other teams are figuring out how to – Brentford is figuring out how to spend money. Brighton's figuring out how to spend money. Newcastle now has a boatload of money. I mean, Liverpool is even learning it this year. You can fall out of the top four mix. And the way Champions League money's where I, I understand what you're saying about rebuilding. It's a very good point. They do have some players here that maybe a manager could figure out. Um, and, and there's that larger looming Antonio Conte point. Was he right? But I think they have to take the Champions League whenever they can get it. Here's a question there for you, Nick, as well. When it comes to Brighton, is it better for the Premier League that they actually, if they could have a late season surge like they're just starting to do again and finish yes. in the top four? Because since Leicester City won the title, I mean, we haven't seen teams from outside of the big six reach in the Champions League. So obviously Newcastle are, are riding it this season, which would be great. But you could argue that they've now made it a big seven, right, at the top of the Premier League. But it'd be great for... Roberto De Zerbi, Alexis McAllister, Moises Casado, like all of those players, Matoma, they have an excellent season. If they're rewarded with this, I feel like it'd be great for the league, as you mentioned, they're the likes of Brentford and others. If there's one team that can sneak into it, it gives that sort of just belief, I think, and confidence to other teams that they can do it as well. Presuming those players would stay, uh, it's very, very good. But I, I remember when Newcastle made the Europa League about 10 years ago and all of a sudden didn't buy players to buttress that run and found themselves in a relegation situation. And at that time, Newcastle's profile was still historically higher than Brighton's is right now. I, I will say this, I think it would be amazing because it helps in Europe. And we forget that, that there is still a message that has to be sent to these other nations. Hey, we are the calling card place. We know this, but when Atalanta first showed up playing stylish football in the Champions League, I was sold. I was, I was ready to adopt that. And I can think about years when either Villarreal or Valencia were at their most impressive. And I think it's very good for the profile of the league in, in Europe to see it. You know, Right now we're seeing West Ham still could win a trophy this year in relegation form. Um, I would love to see that at the Champions League. So it is good. Um, I worry for Brighton if it happens. Yeah, that's true. And I think... You're right. On all those star players, they basically probably would have to finish fourth or maybe fifth, get into Europa League group stage for those players to stick around. And then I don't think it's even enough to keep Alexis McAllister and Casado. Um, but maybe if they finish in the top four, they do and they keep it all together. But uh, De Zerbi for Tottenham manager, Andy, is that a, a fair fair shout there? Was that someone you would take right now uh, for this summer? Maybe. I don't know half a season at this point and he's done very well he picked up in the middle of the season the way that he has but it's a completely different ball game and set of expectations and structure and just idea of how the club is run to your point like we're talking about should spurs take the brighton model not should brighton take the spurs model yeah. and so why would he jump from brighton to spurs rather than spurs to brighton if if the the situation was was the inverse so uh he, he might have success there but I, he doesn't fit the squad of players that are currently there and that's you know, to kind of bring it full circle back to the original point is the squad is in a pretty bad shape and needs a lot of work and overhauling and players moved on, which is probably going to require losses taken on a number of them and big money spent uh, unless they have 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 stocked up a, a very, very deep and thorough scouting network this season and just said nothing about it while losing their sporting director to a worldwide ban, which seems unlikely it's probably going to be shopping in some, you know, a lot of the same stores for Spurs this summer as they have done in recent seasons. And, you know, we have, uh, we've seen how that has gone for them. Absolutely. Uh, a quick score prediction for this weekend, Nick Mandola, obviously Tottenham scrambling a little bit after that draw away at Everton looked like they're lacking confidence and Brighton is kind of taking care of business again, right? They look like the Brighton we saw earlier this season. So what do you, what are you picking, mate? Uh, I no longer bet against Harry Kane scoring in a game, so there's at least one there. So I'll go one-one. Andy, uh, two-one Brighton. They're a better team. They are flat out, simply the better team. I'm going two-one Tottenham. I uh, saw Brighton give up a, quite a few chances to Bournemouth in midweek. I think defensively, that's my only concern for them. Um, I think they play lovely football, but you press them high, you can catch them out. So I think there's still life in Tottenham's top four. Uh, surge late in the season. So let's wait and see what happens. But head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com for all the latest on Tottenham against Brighton, how to watch information, team news preview, video highlights analysis during it. We'll have you covered. A big one. Didn't think of you saying this at the start of the season. When it comes to the top four, Tottenham yeah. against Brighton, 
should be a good one. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.